Less than a week after Let Women Speak campaigner Posey Parker narrowly avoided being trampled to death in New Zealand by a violent mob of heavyset male transgender cultists, furious that their deepest desire to share intimate spaces with young women remained under dubious scrutiny, the deranged and indoctrinated girl who bought the lie being daily churned into young minds that they can defy nature and somehow change sex, shot her way into a religious school in Tennessee and murdered six Christians three of them young children, as part of her own satanic transgender crusade. Ethnic cleansing of any other group, of any other race, religion or creed, would be rightly and roundly condemned, whilst inevitably being seized upon by the power-hungry for weeks as maximum political capital was drained from this pile of innocent corpses. But these weren't just any persecuted group. These were white Christians. The very lowest of the low in the intersectional hierarchy of grievance and permissible hate. So instead of silence, instead of outrage at the slaughter of innocent children, from the American president came giggles of delight about ice cream as the young bodies became ever colder alone on their steel trays in the morgue. My name is Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. <laughs> and I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not. God. Ben, how are you, pal? One of the best guys in the United States Congress, Ben Cardin. <laughs> Folks, uh, welcome to the White House. Puff pieces from international media saw the cowardly, probably hormone-ravaged killer's self-inflicted demise spun as some sort of noble warrior victim herself, despite her demonic cruelty. Our own Daily Mirror whimsied about the murderer's lost future as a talented artist. One wonders what we have to look forward to next in this clown world we are forced to perform in. A lengthy editorial about what a loss to the watercolour community Hitler's untimely death was, perhaps. I myself... Woke up in Clown World this morning to a message from someone in this very building asking me to delete a tweet in which I offered a view that I would be less than happy handing over the safeguarding of my children to a body dysmorphic, mentally unwell bloke in a wig. I was being compelled to reject the evidence of my eyes and ears and refer to this man as a woman. I politely declined because call me old fashioned in a world beset by deceit and lies, adding another to the pile myself didn't feel like a worthwhile contribution. The more we mock, these cynical ideologues, the sooner perhaps the violent virtue signalers may crawl back underneath that rock they came out from. And then on Thursday came the policy exchange report about the imposition of gender ideology upon our children in schools, titled Asleep at the Wheel. The report is a litany of the way schools routinely overreach their ideological mittens into the sacred business of the family by socially transitioning children without parental knowledge or consent and other equally unnatural practices. One might have thought lessons could really be learned about the damages of socially transitioning young people without consent from our pathetic, cowardly she-killer in Tennessee, who in defiance and anger of her Christian upbringing and her parents' conviction that such things as sex are sacred and immutable, wrought her deadly and bitter revenge on innocent children. It is impossible not to see this as anything other than the thing that it is. We are in a spiritual war to protect the very underpinnings of truth itself. Society cannot function when it subjugates itself to a radical narcissistic cult held bent on the destruction of truth. Society cannot function when schools and the state turn children against their parents, soothing them with the snake oil sadness that a child can be born in the wrong body. Society cannot function when good men and women deny the truth for fear of the mob. Society cannot function when the mob rules. And free speech is only free when girdled by empirical truth. The reductive moral relativism of these postmodern movements, though, deny the very existence of truth itself, preferring the silky comfort of subjectivism and deceit. Any teacher or parent who panders to the gender cult instead of embracing the genuine privilege of raising children, of nurturing and supporting their kids through the harsh realities of actual real life, as opposed to this upsy-downy clown world, has let their child down in the most fundamental way. Just as any adult who, through fear of upsetting the toxically masculine trans mob, refuses to stand up for the truth, becomes an accomplice in its murder. It is possible 
to love your enemies, and we should. To hate the sin and not the sinner, to be wise in the knowledge that all human beings are deeply flawed and susceptible to all kinds of evil and malice. But it is also possible to recognise our mistakes and change direction. If we don't, how long will it be before a woman is stamped to death for asserting her right to exist and express an opinion? Or a child, poisoned by this pernicious ideology, stalks home to reap the most chilling revenge on their loving parents?